So the prototypical examples of vector spaces are Rn. So R2, the plane, R3, 3 space, etc. These are our examples. So in general, Rn is a vector space. And we'll look at more exotic uh, examples later, but for right now, we'll just look at the example of R2. So to understand why the plane R2, so let me just write R2 is the collection of all vectors x, y, where x and y are real numbers. Okay, so this is the, <coughs> um, when you read this, you say this is, this is the set of um, all objects of this type, so in this case, pairs of objects. Um, and then you say, which satisfy Uh, this criteria. Okay, and so this this is a very uh, non-restrictive criteria. It's just saying any real number will work. Okay, so all things that look like pairs of real numbers. That's the set that we're looking at here. This is the plane. Okay, so why is this a vector space? Well, um, if I take uh, A, B, and I take X, Y, so these are two, actually, you know what? Let me back up and change the notation so that it matches with um, what I have before. So let X and Y be elements of R2. Okay, what do we know then? Well then, by our definition of R2, we know that X is a vector of length two, and we know that Y is a vector of length two. And what are those entries? Well, I don't know, but I know they're real numbers, so that's fine. Okay. <clears throat> now, uh, in order to check to see if something's a vector space, we need to ask ourselves questions like, is zero an element of R2? And you might think, uh, no, because it's not a vector of length two, and I would ask, ask, answer you, well, yes, because when I write this, what I mean is that zero is the zero vector. So yes, the zero vector is an element of R2. So when we say does a vector space contain zero, we mean contain the appropriate idea of zero for that set. So eh, it should be clear from the context. Okay, um, then we say, okay, so is x plus y an element of R2? Well, yes, because we know, uh, given two vectors of length two, we know how to add them. You add the coordinates. And so when we do that operation, we look at the resulting thing, we say, oh yeah, sure, that, that's an element of R2. Yes, check. What about, is C times X going to be an element of R2? So Cx is, by our definition of scalar multiplication, Cx1, Cx2. And that is, again, a bona fide element of R2. So we're good there. Okay, now let's look at subspaces, and I think that'll help to make the idea a little bit more clear. So suppose I say, um, let's take W to be the collection of all elements of R2 such that the first coordinate is equal to zero. Um, <clears throat> is W um, a subspace of R2? Okay, well, we need to ask ourselves, does it contain the zero element? So, so we check that it's in there. That's good. Then we say, okay, so suppose um, we take two things from W. Okay. Then we write down what that means. So then, so when you say write down what that means, that means look at this criterion that they have to satisfy. 
If we chose them from w, then they better have a first coordinate of 0. So that means that x looks like 0 something, and y looks like <coughs> 0 something. Okay, so now we go to check our other questions. So is x plus y in w? So is it closed under addition? Well, x plus y is going to look like 0 plus 0 over x1 plus y1. And so then we look and say, okay, so right here we have a 0. Having a 0 in the first coordinate is exactly the condition that allows you to be in the set. So yes, this guy is in w because it satisfies this condition. Okay, what about... Um, is c times x an element of w? Well, cx is going to be, and then we've got c times 0, and then we've got c times x2. Oh gosh, I just realized I wrote x1 and y1 in the previous, okay, let me just fix that real quick. Whoops, whoopsie. Typo, okay, fixed now. Um, <clears throat> So then we look at this one and say, okay, so is Cx an element of W? And you say, well, C times X1 is equal to 0. And so then that means that it, uh, the first coordinate is 0, which means we've satisfied this condition. So yes, it's going to be an element of W. Okay, so... <clears throat> Uh, the conclusion is that W is closed under <coughs> um, addition and scalar multiplication so it is a vector space since W is contained in R2 which I would write as W is contained in R2. <clears throat> w is a subspace of R2. Okay. Um, so there's an example of a subspace. Let's look at um, another set of things. Say U is going to be all of the, uh, oops, sorry, u is going to be all the elements of R2 such that, so the three dots mean such that, um, uh, x1 uh, is equal to 1. And actually, let, let me call this u just to make it a little more generic looking. There we go. So u is going to be all the things in R2 that have first coordinate equal to 1. And so is u a vector space? Okay. Well, <coughs> um, the first thing we do is we check to see is 0 in u. And so the question is, um, if we look at 0, Is this first coordinate here a 1? And the answer is no. So since it fails right there, the answer to this question is no. It is not a subspace. We can get that immediately from the zero test. Um, but let's look a little bit uh, further. So suppose that you forgot to do the zero test and you said, okay, well, let's just uh, pick two things from U. Then what does that mean? Well, then by the criteria for what it means to be an element of U right here, um, <clears throat> that means that we have X looks like 1 comma X2 and y looks like 1 comma y2. So both of these have first coordinate equal to 1. But if I look at x plus y, 
then I'm going to end up with 2 as the first coordinate. And so the sum doesn't satisfy the condition for being a member of the set, namely uh, that the first coordinate should equal 0. And similarly, if I look at Cx, well, <clears throat> it needs to work for any scalar C. So if I can find an example of C that it fails for, So in this case, for any c other than 1, then I know that it can't be a subspace. So there's three reasons why this is not a subspace. And geometrically, what's going on is the following. Now, in the first example that we looked at, um, we looked at ones that have uh, x1 coordinate equal to 0. So that's actually just the y-axis right here. So this one is um, the one that we called w. And you can see that, um, and so here's the x1 axis, here's the x2 axis. And so if I take any vector here and any other vector uh, so it could be one that's pointing maybe this way, or it could be one that's uh, pointing parallel to the first one, whatever. If I add any of those three vectors together, I'm going to end up on the blue line again. That's closure under addition. Um, if I take that green guy and I multiply it by uh, any uh, positive number, well, if the number's bigger than 1, then I'm going to get some point up here on the line. If it's between 0 and 1, I'll get some point in here on the line. And if it's negative, I'll get somewhere down here on the line. So any of those scalar multiples of the green one are going to end up on the blue line again. As opposed to, let's take a look at what happened with the unfortunate example of u. So in this case, um, <clears throat> u looked like uh, things that have x1 coordinate equal to 1. So we just shifted it by a little bit right here. So here's my portrait of u, uh, so to speak. And <clears throat> now let's look at what happens. So if I take, uh, say, uh, my green vector here and my orange vector uh, here, like I had in the previous example, well then if I add the orange to the green, now I'm going to get out, out here and I am off the blue, right? So I'm just doing like standard vector addition, tail to head, boing and I end up out in space off the blue. Similarly, if I uh, do a scalar multiple by 2 of the green one, then I'm going to multiply this, and it's going to come out to, you know, here somewhere. And it would similarly be off of the blue. So it's not closed under scalar multiplication as well. And I guess as a final point, you can notice that the blue line does not contain the origin. So it can't be a vector space. And so I haven't proved this, and I'm not going to, but you'll just have to take it on faith, that it turns out that any subspace of R2 is always going to look like a line through the origin. So there's a subspace. There's a subspace. So here's like, uh, you know, V1, V2. <coughs> so... Actually, here, let me be precise. Uh, I was a little bit wrong. Okay, so the subspaces of R2 uh, look like the following. We can have the single, the set that contains only the origin itself. It's called the trivial vector space. It's pretty dumb but we got to let it in for various technical reasons. So that's just the, the origin. Uh, then you can have a line through the origin, like v1 or v2, 
And then you can have all of R2 itself. That's a vector space, and R2 is contained in R2. Again, that's kind of trivial, but hey, it's true. So those are the three types of subspaces that we have for R2. Nothing else is a subspace of R2.